Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a look at the new and improved preset panels in Photoshop. First of all, the swatches and gradients, as well as patterns and styles and shapes, all have new default presets for you to work with. Of course, you can still load the legacy presets for any of the panels by using the flyout menu and choosing legacy. And the pattern styles and shapes panels have additional presets that you can load. So there are new presets that ship with Photoshop. They just don't load by default. Okay, in order to help organize presets, we can now click on the group icon or the folder icon here in order to add a group. I can reposition that group. I can even nest that group inside another group and then just drag and drop the presets that I want to add. In this case, I'll hold down the shift key and select a number of presets and drag and drop them. And then if I need to reorder them, I can just select them and then drag to reposition. I can also right click if I need to import or export swatches. I can rename my swatches and also delete the swatches. So we no longer have to use the preset manager as we did in the past. All right, now applying presets is really easy, but how the preset is applied depends on the type of layer that it's being applied to. I'm gonna zoom into these wheat shapes. Now there's a new shortcut. I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and in the Layers panel, I will click on the Wheat Illustration Layer group to zoom into that area. There are really three ways to apply presets. I'm going to start with a shape layer, so I'll select it in the Layers panel, and then I can just click on any of the presets in order to apply that color or that gradient or that pattern. But if you have a really complex document and you don't want to take the time to find the right layer in the Layers panel, you can also drag and drop from any of these preset panels onto the Layers content in the Canvas area or you can just drag from the preset panel onto one of the layers in the Layers panel, and you'll notice that that layer doesn't even have to be selected. Of course, presets work with multiple layers at one time as well. I'll select all of these and then just apply a gradient. Now, because shape layers support fills of colors, gradients, and patterns, applying these presets just changed the fill. It was very easy. All right, let's zoom to the text area. Again, I'll hold down the Option key on Mac, the Alt key on Windows, and then use Command minus just to zoom out a little bit. Now with a type layer selected, clicking on a color swatch will change the color of that type. But because type layers don't support gradient or pattern fills, when I select one of those options, Photoshop adds a layer effect. Now, if you're not familiar with layer effects, they're always applied on top of the current layer. So in this case, they're hiding the color fill. If I toggle off their visibility, we can see that fill. I just want to make sure I point that out. So if you do decide to change the color fill of a layer, but you don't see any change in the image area, it might be because you have a layer effect being applied on top of it. The change was made, but the gradient overrides it. Same with adding a pattern. The gradient will always be added on top of the pattern. So if I wanted to see it, I would just hide the gradient overlay. All right, let's go ahead and delete those effects for now. I'll hold down the Shift key to select both of the layers and then change their color to a light green. By the way, you can add a swatch, gradient, or pattern to type as a fill layer as opposed to a layer effect. Just hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows as you drag. And the benefit to using a fill layer over a layer effect is that a fill layer will have a layer mask, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Now what if you're working with a bitmap layer, like a photograph or a smart object? Or what if you have a layer group selected? Well, then clicking on a color swatch will just change your foreground color. So let's use Command-0 to zoom out and then select another color. As we can see, only the foreground color was changed. But if I drag and drop a color swatch or a gradient or a pattern on top of a photo, then Photoshop will automatically add a fill layer. So either a color fill layer or a gradient or a pattern fill layer, and it clips it so that it's only going to be displayed where there's content in the layer below. 
Now we can't see through the color, so I'll quickly just change the blend mode here to color. Now once I have a color fill layer selected, if I wanted to change it to, say, a gradient fill, I could just click and drag in order to replace the content. I'll go ahead and do that again with this black and white, and then I'm going to click on the mask, tap G to select the gradient tool, and click and drag up to show you that the advantage of these fill layers is that they do have that mask, which I can make use of, unlike the layer effects. If for some reason you prefer not to have the layer clipped when you drag it, you can hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows. Now, applying presets to layer groups is an efficient way to change multiple layers at one time. I'll select the wheat illustration, but before I drag a gradient onto it, I want you to notice that if the shape layers have a fill of a gradient, then each shape layer is filled individually. So each one of these gets its own gradient. If I drag and drop a gradient from the gradients panel onto the wheat illustration, it's going to treat them as if they're a single unit. I'm going to double click in order to make a change here. I'm just going to scale down my gradient about 20% and then reposition it by dragging in the image area because I want to show you that adding it this way as a gradient fill layer, the gradient is applied from top to bottom over all three layers, not individually. All right, with all of these types of layers that we've discussed, clicking on a style adds the layer effects that make up the style, and it's going to replace any layer effects that were already applied. So I'll select the text layer group, and let's apply a drop shadow. We can see that's been applied, and I've got the drop shadow layer effect in the layers panel. If I click on this next style, however, the drop shadow will go away because it's not part of the style. This style is only a gradient overlay. So if you ever want to combine styles as opposed to have in Photoshop replace them, just hold down the shift key and drag and drop the style onto the layer or layer group. All right, let's wrap up by talking about shapes for a moment. They work the same as the other presets in that I can drag and drop them into the canvas area, but I do want to be careful if I were to drag and drop it into the canvas right now. It depends on where I drop it as to where it appears in the layers panel. So if I dropped it right now, it would release and create this layer in between the photo layer and the gradient fill. If I come over here, it would add it to my layers panel above the text. So what I might want to do if I want more control is just drag and drop it in the layers panel itself. So now the hen has been added. I can go ahead and reposition it. I can resize it, tap enter or return in order to apply that transformation. We can see that that shape has been added to the top of my layers panel. Oh, and one final note, the Libraries panel now supports gradients, so if you're creating libraries in order to share assets, you can now share your gradients as well. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.